Let's talk free games from the Epic Game Store. Disclosure. If you are one of those people who does not like talk about the Epic Game Store, you should stop watching this video right now. I am not affiliated with the Epic Game Store, nor am I responsible for Borderlands 3 not being released on Steam. Please do not be vindictive and thumb down this video. Thank you for your consideration. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk some free games. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, the Epic Game Store, in order to compete with other digital storefronts, has been offering free games going back to December 12th, 2018 with Subnautica, their first game they offered for free, up until the most recent two games, A Plague Tale, Innocence, and Speed Brawl, both were thrown up there August 5th, 2021. Games are free to grab as long as you grab them within the window of which the free game is offered, usually one week. After that, the window closes and the game goes back to its regular price on the Epic Game Store. But don't fret too much, some of these games have been offered up more than once. There are a total of 14 games that came back around and got offered up a second time. Also, joining now, you may have missed out on some of these great games that I'm going to go through in this analysis, but it doesn't seem like Epic is planning on stopping anytime soon. So you can still grab up those free games, especially in December when they start offering a new game every day. And one last thing to note is you do not have to have a PC when you redeem these games. In fact, you do not even have to download these games or anything. All you have to do is go to the site and click redeem. If you are planning to get a computer sometime in the future or a gaming PC later, go ahead and redeem them to your account and they'll be right there waiting for you when you get your computer. I also put a link in the description to a Google Sheets doc with all the backup for these prices I'm going to give you. As a note, all of these prices are as of the date of the latest offering, August 5th, 2021. This is my first time doing an analysis like this, but I plan on doing more in the future. If you like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I want to dig deep not just into these epic games, but also things like games with Prime, Humble Choice, and Xbox Game Pass. Alright, so let's get to the heart of this video. How much are these free games worth? Whoa, that's a weird sentence. How can free games be worth anything? Well, you ways to answer that question and let's get into it. So let's start with the total number of games. By my count, I get a total of 203 games. I have excluded any games that are always free or free to play. Sorry Genshin Impact, sorry Idol Champions. So we got a lot of games here. So how do we come up with a value for these games? Well, one could argue philosophically that these games are worth a whopping zero dollars. Whoa, hold up. Why would you say zero dollars? This is all these games. These cost so much money if you wanted to buy them. Well, yeah, that's true. But since you didn't pay anything for them if you got them on the Epic Game Store, you have no cost basis for the game. And since you can't sell these games unless you do some weird black market stuff, there's really no way to get any actual monetary value out of this collection of games. Now, that being said, this would be a pretty boring video if I just told you your collections were zero and ended there. Plus, I think if we were to go by that philosophy, my entire Steam collection, my entire GOG collection, all those digital games on the Nintendo store would all be worthless. And that's a bitter pill to swallow. I don't want to swallow it. So instead, I'm going to throw a value on them, and here's how we're going to do it. Best way to value a collection like this is we can think of what would it cost if I was to buy all 200 of these games right now. Let's just say I go on the Epic Store, hey, buy, 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 and buy all this stuff. How much would that rack up my credit card bill? Well, I think that's a good answer to this question because that gets you back in the same position you're at now. How much money do you have to spend in order to be in that position where you own these 200 games, i.e. own them in the same way that you own any other digital game? Can't transfer them, but you can play them whenever you want on any PC you want as long as you're logged into your account. We got a pretty good methodology here, but I'm going to add one more caveat. Instead of using the Epic Store prices, we're going to use the Steam prices. Why Steam? Steam is the biggest PC game retailer out there. So that's going to give us a more objective price, and we can see what most people are going to be paying for these games. We're going to run into a couple of issues with this methodology. The first one is the Epic exclusives. As of this recording date, Epic has released three games for free on their site that are exclusive to their store. Total War Saga Troy, World War Z, and the Alto Collection. For these three games, we're not going to be able to get a Steam price, and we're going to have to settle for the Epic price. We have two other games that are going to cause us problems, Football Manager 2020 and Observer. Both these games have been delisted from all digital storefronts. They are no longer available on Steam. They are no longer available on Epic. So how do we value these two games? Well, the short answer is we don't. If the question you're trying to answer is how much do I have to spend to get back to these 203 games? Well, that's going to 
going to be impossible to answer for these two games. Instead, we're going to have to ask how much do I have to spend to get to these 201 games and exclude these two games from our calculation. All right, so let's calculate. Calculating, calculating. Ooh, shopping cart's getting full. Boom, and then we get a total. These 201 games add up to a total of $4,358.76. Whoa, over four grand in video games? That sounds like a lot of money. And it is a lot of money, but remember, they've been giving these games away over the course of two and a half years. So this is just the building and building and building of a library. So before you start typing that comment about the flaws in this pricing methodology, I hear you. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, hey, George, that's great. Four grand sounds like a lot, but you're using the list prices on Steam. And trust me, ain't no one paying full price for a lot of these games. And that is a very valid point. These games, although some of them list pretty high, if you just wait for a Steam sale, you can get some steep, steep discounts. Let's just look at the game Just Cause 4, which now sells as Just Cause 4 Reloaded Bundle on Steam. That normally runs at a list price of $62.95, but in the last Steam sale, this dropped all the way down to $7.86. That's a big difference in price, $55.09, and that's not the only one. We've got plenty of other big drops. Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun, drops from $39.99 to $3.99. The Pony of the Complete Journey, $29.99 to $2.99. Figment, $19.99 to $1.99. And the cheapest game that we have on the list, Tormentor X Punisher, normally sells for $7.99. In the last Steam sale, it sold for a whopping $0.79. Cents. As you can see with this example, we have a lot of variability in the prices of some of these games. They'll sell for pretty high list prices, but drop significantly during these big Steam sales. We need to go back to the drawing board here. Our first calculation, although it may make us feel good to say we got four grand worth of free stuff, and maybe that's what Epic would like us to think and what they would promote, is probably not a real number. Those list prices on Steam and other sites are a bit overinflated, to say the least. I think the true price of a game is what it sells for when it's on sale. Enter istthereanydeal.com. Is There Any Deal is a great site that will show you the lowest prices of video games, what they sell for across multiple platforms, lots of price comparison info, and what I'm really interested in is price history for all these games. So we can dig into the data on this site and we can actually use it to calculate us a new price, a price based on sale prices, not just those prices that you see on Steam. Here's the methodology we're going to do. We'll use the last sale price of the game. That gives us a good idea of what the game really sells for. We could go with the lowest price, but I don't know if that's fully fair because some of these low prices are from years and years ago, and it's not going to give you the value of the game now. We want to get the price closest to our current date, and I think that's going to be the last sale price. Now we have a handful of games that haven't gone on sale in a very long time. We have the game Aztez, which hasn't gone on sale since June of last year. Similarly, there's Hyper Light Drifter, which also hasn't gone on sale since last year, and Fez, which hasn't been on sale in a long time as well. So we're going to use the list price for these, because I think if we're trying to get a value of this collection as of today, we have to stick to prices that you can get in a reasonable time frame. So sale prices over a year old or in prior years probably should be excluded. When we add it all up, we get $1,489.46. <sighs> well, that's a lot less, guys. That deflated us a little bit. In fact, that's about a third of that original list price number. But I think overall, this gives us a much fairer price of what this collection is actually worth. And honestly, in my opinion, it's not bad. It, it comes out to about $48 a month that you're getting worth of free games. From an ec economics perspective, any price above zero is a good price to redeem free games, but that, that does give me a little incentive to go on the Epic Store, get some of these games, check out what they're offering. All right, so let's talk highlights. So if we sort it by price, the best offering is a Total War Saga Troy. But the one caveat about this game is that it's an Epic exclusive, so we have to use the Epic sale price of $37.49. This was also a strange one in that it was only offered up as a free game for one day. Haven't played this one, not sure how good it is, but it is technically the most valuable game in the collection of free games. Next is Control, which last went on sale February 11th, 2021 on Steam for $24. We also have a couple of other highlights. Subnautica, Tyranny Gold Edition, Hyperlight Drifter, and 
Estes, which if you remember, those are the ones that haven't gone on sale since June of last year. So we were using the list price for those two games. We also got Pillars of Eternity Definitive Edition, NBA 2K21, Rage 2, and Remnant from the Ashes. So these are kind of the highlights of the most expensive games. Now if we go to the opposite side of the spectrums, what were the cheapest games that they offered? So the cheapest is Tormentor X Punisher, the previously mentioned game that sold for 79 cents in the last Steam sale. We also got quite a few here that are under $2. The Bridge, Ganyar, Air Memories of Old, Stick It to the Man, City of Brass, Rebel Galaxy, Figment, Amnesia, of the Dark Descent, Amnesia Machine for Pig, The First Tree, Sonic Mania. And remember, the only thing I'm looking at in this analysis is the price of these games. This is not looking at reviews or overall quality of the games. I'm going to do another analysis where I do a deep dive into reviews, into playtime, into user reviews. But for this, we are just looking at the price. So basically, it starts moving up slowly from there to $2 games, then $3 games. The average price of a game offering is $7.43, and the median is $5.99. All right, so I think that gives us a pretty complete picture if we're asking the question, what is my game collection worth? Again, you could still throw out that zero number, but I like thinking of it as $1,400. So are we done? We're done, we got our number, we're happy with it. Well, if you were Tim Sweeney, you would say, whoa, hold on a sec. All right, sale prices, I'll give it to you. That's fine, I know that the real price of a game is what it sells for when it's on sale. But you're missing one crucial component, and that's the point in time in which we gave you the game. Just look at one of our early games like Axiom Verge. We gave that to you way back in February 7th of 2019. So fine, it sells at the Steam sale for $4.99, but you ain't gonna get that price way back in February of 2019. It wasn't going on sale for no steep drop like that. And honestly, that's probably a good point, but that is bringing up a different question. I think if we start taking into consideration the point in time in which a game was offered, we're answering the question of what is the value of what Epic gave us as opposed to the current question which is what is the current value of this collection of games both questions are valid but you could see how Epic would be more interested in answering that first question so okay Let's go back to isthereanydeal.com and we can look at the history of these games. And what we can do is we can pull the previous sale price right before the game was offered. Then we can use those sale prices to calculate a new total value for this collection. And the great thing about this methodology is we can bring back those two games we forgot about. Come back here, Observer. Come back here, Football Manager. You guys can now be included because we're not looking at the current value of this collection. Instead, we're looking at historic prices. All right, so if we calculate that, we get one thousand seven hundred eleven dollars and sixteen cents so honestly it's not too much different than our other calculation that's a 15 percent increase over our previous calculation now we could really get into the weeds here calculating different prices there's things like bundles there's also multiple other storefronts like humble store indie gala green man gaming fanatical all that could be offering the game at a lower price than steam but remember we're not trying to find the lowest price possible for these games we're just trying to find a fair price and i think looking at the steam sale price gives us that fairest price. A couple of highlights from this last calculation, which I'm going to call last sale price before offer. A couple of these games launched as free games to the Epic Store. Those are Totally Reliable Delivery Service, The Alto Collection, the previously mentioned Troy, A Total War Saga, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition. This is a classic game, but I guess this version called the Complete Edition launched on that day to multiple sites, one of which being free on the Epic Store, and Sludge Life. There were also a few games where the previous sale price was actually higher than the current list price. And don't forget, all of this information is in the Google Sheets document linked in the description. All right, guys, that's it. We have three prices. We have the list price, the last sale price, and the last sale price before offer. Put in your comments what you think is the best price. Also, put in the comments if there is something that I missed or something that I did not calculate correctly. If you like this video, you should consider subscribing to our channel. We're typically a Let's Play channel, but I'm going to do more deep dive analysis like this and not just on the Epic Game Store. I also want to do a deep dive into Humble Choice, Xbox Game Pass, Games with Prime. And I don't want to just look at prices. I want to look at things like critic reviews, gamer reviews, playtime, all that good stuff with these games. So if you're interested in more analysis like this, feel free to check out some of my future videos that I will create, hopefully, at some point. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.